All right, so moving on to the final topic, I will be sharing my prediction of which NFL player will be crowned the 2022 NFL MVP of this league this season. So I took a lot of thought and a lot of consideration to this pick. There's a lot of dark horses. The dark horses I will name very quickly. The dark horses I believe that do have a true chance to win this award, and it wouldn't shock me if they do win this award. I'm going to go ahead and say Kirk Cousins, as much as I downfall, and talk bad about Kirk Cousins. He's in a friendly offensive system. Mike Zimmerman, the former head coach for the Minnesota Vikings, was known as a defensive guy. A de so he had a defensive coach. Not really much going into the offensive game plan. However, this is different. They're getting the Rams, uh, the former Rams offensive coordinator to coach him in that offense this year. He's going to have Justin Jefferson, who has the opportunity to be the best wide receiver in football. He's going to have uh, Adam Thielen as his second best receiver at, for Minnesota. He's going to have Dalvin Cook he can depend on and passing the ball as well. And I think Herb Smith Jr. at the tight end position is going to shock a lot of people this year. So it wouldn't be a bad choice to say that Kirk Cousins has a chance to win the MVP award. I can't believe I said that. I might be sick to my stomach. It made me throw up in my mouth a little bit. So I'm going to have to take a five second break. Um, let's go to my other dark horse. Uh, two other ones. Um, the other one is Trey Lance. I think Trey Lance really does have an opportunity to win the MVP award this season. I think he has a opportunity to win the award and go out there and win the award just like Patrick Mahomes did his sophomore season with the Kansas City Chiefs. Sat behind Alex Smith. Uh, at, that was his teacher for his rookie season with the Kansas City Chiefs. Only played one game and came out the next year and shocked a lot of people, won the MVP award, and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tom Brady in the AFC Championship game just a few years ago. So that's what Josh, I mean, that's what Patrick Mahomes did a few years ago. I think Trey Lance is going to have the same similar story. Learning behind Jimmy Garoppolo for a year, Jimmy Garoppolo being his teacher. His teacher is still there, but he doesn't have the training wheels on him. And he started he looked pretty good in his first two games that he played last year against the Arizona Cardinals and against the Houston Texans where he did officially receive his first NFL win last year against the Houston Texans he has all the weapons to make sure he can have an MVP type of year he's in a Kyle a friendly offense with Kyle Shanahan who has never really had a dual threat guy in his offense you think about it he's had Kirk Cousins uh his quarterback at his time as an offensive coordinator with the Washington Commanders, who once upon a time were called the Washington Redskins. Obviously, he let, got Matt Ryan almost over the hump and almost helped him win a Super Bowl, but was behind Matt Ryan winning an MVP award in the 2016-2017 season with the Atlanta Falcons as his time as the offensive coordinator with the Falcons. And then you think about all the success that he's had with Jimmy Garoppolo calling plays and it, it was a few plays away of winning a Super Bowl. He's had a lot of playoff success with Jimmy Garoppolo. Why can't he have success with a dual threat guy? All those quarterbacks I just named were also pocket passers. I think he can have a lot of success with a dual threat guy in Trey Lance. Trey Lance has a lot of weapons. He has Debo Samuel at the wide receiver position. He has Brandon Ayuk at the wide receiver position. He has George Kittle at the tight end position. So why not see Trey Lance have that year that Patrick Mahomes did his sophomore season learning behind Alex Smith and became the MVP? I think Trey Lance has a true chance of doing that learning behind Jimmy Garoppolo for a year, and then being the MVP of this league. And then my other dark horse pick is Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. Listen, I know it's not looking pretty for the Dallas Cowboys on paper. I know we just signed a 40-year-old offensive lineman and Jason Peters to play on the left side at left tackle for the offensive line due to the fact that Tyrone Smith is going to be gone. But I can see Dak Prescott rising above the uh, – uh, rising up overcoming adversity and putting on an MVP year he's been his numbers have been rising and increasing since 2019 you can see his improve, improvement in passing yards you can see improvement in his touchdowns you can see the interception rate going down even lower every year he just had 37 touchdowns 10 interceptions last year obviously everybody knows the story about the wild card game how we were 20 12 and 5 as the third seed lost it in the wild card games in San Francisco 49ers I think this team is going to be out for revenge I think Dak Prescott is going to prove a lot of people wrong this year. And even with the weapons, I think C.D. Lamb is going to lean on a lot. He still has a security blanket in Dalton Schultz. I think the combination of receivers that he's going to have when Gallup gets fully healthy, James Washington gets healthy. We have Jalen Tolbert, 
We have a lot of Turbin, a uh, former MVP elsewhere. We have a lot of things that Dak Prescott can do uh, offensively. So I think he's not down. He's not out of the MVP race. I'm not saying he's a front runner. He's a dark horse. But my true MVP pick here is Josh Allen. Why do I have Josh Allen? Let me explain. He has everything he needs around him to put together a true MVP season. He has the best overall roster, in my opinion, in the league heading into week one, which is tomorrow night when they play on the road against the Los Angeles Rams. But I think they have the best roster in the league. They're loaded offensively and defensively, which puts him in a great, has put, even rises his chance even more to win a MVP. He has a great supporting cast around him. Offensively, they have Stefan Diggs. We know the connection between them is truly special. It's been special for the last two years. I think year three is going to be even more special. He has somebody who can grow with and Gabe Davis, Gabriel Davis, who will be the absolute stud as the wide receiver number two for the Buffalo Bills this year. I think he's going to have one heck of a season for them. So he has two great wide receivers to throw to. They're going to have Jamison Crowder, who's a speedster. They're going to be playing in the slot for Buffalo. They have James Cook, their second round pick that from Georgia I think he's going to be one heck of a uh, good running back in their offense once the season moves along I think they'll find out that James Cook is the guy to put at the running back position over Devin Singletary and Zach Moss out there in Buffalo so he's going to have him down the line I believe Dawson Knox at the tight end position I think he's going to have one heck of a special season after the passing of his younger brother that occurred last month and just put pen to paper today congratulations to him for signing a new 53 million dollar deal that's actually one of the highest paid tight ends. He's being one, paid as one of the highest paid tight ends in the league with that new deal. So I think all those offensive weapons, uh, Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, James Cook, who he can rely on to run the ball more, and um, Dawson Knox in the tight end position is going to help him offensively. Defensively, he has a great supporting cast, even though he's not on the defensive side of the ball. He has a good defense to lean on. They have Ed Oliver, Jordan Phillips, Von Miller, all on that front seven, going to be active on that defensive line. It's going to be special. They have cornerback uh, Kiara Elam, my guy from Florida. Don't ever say Florida Gators don't produce NFL players. They truly do. Kiara Elam, their first-round pick from Florida at the quarterback position, going to be holding it down until Tredavious White comes back as, as their true number one corner. I think he's one of the best cornerbacks in football. But Kier Irlam is going to get a lot of reps, a lot of number, get a lot of action against the number ones until he comes back. So I think this is even going to make him even a better player for his rookie season. So you have the two of them locking up at the cornerback position, locking down wide receivers, and their defensive backs doesn't it doesn't end there because they have this best safety duo in the National Football League. We talk about Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, both there at strong safety and free safety. So. Their defensive backs are going to be loaded. They're going to be making a lot of plays, a lot of interceptions for the Buffalo defense. And I think their front seven is going to cause a lot of havoc, a lot of sacks that's going to take place on that defensive side of the ball for the Buffalo Bills. Josh Allen is set to make the MVP year. Why is that? He's reaching his peak when it matters most. I think when you talk about dual threat quarterbacks, you talk about what a dual threat quarterback can truly do. A dual threat quarterback can make plays with his arms, and with his arm and his legs. You know what Lamar Jackson brings to the table. He can make plays with his arm and his legs. He, you talk about Kyler Murray could do the same thing with his arm and his legs. Dare I say, even though Jalen Hurts is a quarterback running back in my eyes, both playing the same position, he could be a dual threat play, making plays with his arm and his legs. But when you talk about the best dual threat who could do it both, get the best of both worlds out of him, I just named Lamar Jackson. I just named Jalen Hurts. And I just named Kyler Murray. Yes, those guys are speedsters, they have wheels, but how good is their arm strength? Let me actually I just include Kyler Murray from that category. Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen has a better arm than. Jalen Hurts, he, Josh Allen has a better arm than. Kyler Murray shouldn't be in their conversation of, with arm talent, but he has a better arm talent than Kyler Murray. So I do believe that Josh Allen is the best dual threat quarterback. Numbers speak for itself. Last year, Josh Allen had well over 4,000 passing yards, 36 touchdowns thrown while having 763 rushing yards and six rushing touchdowns last season. So tell me who's the best dual threat quarterback in the league when they get truly get it done with their arm and their legs. It's Josh Allen. And I believe Josh Allen will have the best year of his NFL career so far. He's been taking baby steps 
ever since the Buffalo Bills have addressed what he's needed, I, I really love the fact that what they've been doing since 2020 to help him his game uh, take it to the next level. They brought in Stephon Diggs the, from that trade that went down there in the 2020 NFL offseason between the Bills and the Vikings. They they helped bring in Dawson Knox. They gave Davis. Uh, they're get they're loading up and they have uh, a great they have a great coaching system. And Brian Dable did one heck of a great job for him as an offensive coordinator for the Bills over those years to help him groom and blossom into the player that he is. So he's been getting, taking the baby steps. 2020 and 2021, you can see the big steps. Obviously in 2020, he got his first two playoff career wins. First one against both, uh, against the Phillip Rivers and the Indianapolis Colts. He beat Lamar Jackson, the Baltimore Ravens in the second round in the divisional round of the 2020 playoffs. Last year, won a wild card game against Mac Jones and the New England Patriots in Buffalo. You know, he's learning. He's getting better and better at each and every single year. The playoff wins, he already has three playoff wins now under his belt. So I think he's going to come out for a re true revenge tour. Uh, I think he did a revenge tour last season when he got his heart ripped out against the Chiefs in the AFC Championship in 2020. Now he's coming for even more, uh, more of revenge because he got his heart ripped out. Watch the Kansas City Chiefs go down the field with 14 seconds left, tie the game, and watch Patrick Mahomes and company go down the field and score a touchdown. They didn't even get a chance to get the ball back in overtime and that thriller game in the divisional round against the Chiefs last year. So this is a true revenge tour for Josh Allen this year. He has all the pieces to get everything done and the uh, at least win a MVP this year. I'm looking forward to how the offense is going to be ran this year due to the fact that Brian Dable is now the new head coach for the New York Giants. He was the mastermind behind Josh Allen's Josh Allen's success for the last two seasons. He was the he was the magician, the play caller that sat in the box on every every given Sunday, making Josh Allen look like the 200 million, over 200 million dollar quarterback that he is. Not taking any way, uh, anything away from Josh Allen, but I'm just curious to see how that offense is going to be ran without Brian Dable this year. They're going to be absolutely fine. I just want to see how the offense is going to be ran. Um, if they, and I'm talking about MVP. I think Josh Allen has that in the bag because of the reasons why I just said. But if the AFC runs through Buffalo this year and the Buffalo Bills get the first seed in the AFC this year, look out. They, have a, they will punch their ticket to Super Bowl 57 to play in Arizona this February due to the fact that Josh Allen, I just said, has had playoff success. All those three wins that, he was re that he's gotten over the last two seasons, you talk about that wild card game against Phillip Rivers in the internet Indianapolis Colts team in 2020. Where that game take place? Buffalo. You talk about that divisional game where they play the Baltimore Ravens and they beat Lamar Jackson. Where that game take place at? Buffalo. You look at last year, when they gave the New England Patriots the absolute smackdown, Mac Jones and Bill Belichick and company, where did that game take place? Where they put up over 50 points in Buffalo. Where the last two, where, how has the season ended the last two times for the Buffalo Bills in the playoffs? Not in Buffalo, on the road. So if they lock up the first seed and have home field advantage throughout the entire playoffs, they are going to the Super Bowl, and they have a great chance to win Super Bowl 57 this year. So that is my pick. The win MVP this year is Josh Allen. And if the Buffalo Bills lock up the first seed in the book and the route, the road to the Super Bowl, the road to the Super Bowl on the AFC side of things runs through Buffalo, just cancel it. Buffalo Bills get into the Super Bowl because that's how hungry I believe this Buffalo Bills team is going to be this year. But that is all the time I have for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. This is your host, Thomas Harry, signing off. And I'll see you guys on next week's episode. And if you guys haven't checked out episode 65, go ahead and do that as well. It's now available on all four of our platforms, our Instagram account, our Facebook account, our YouTube account, and our Apple Podcast account. So that is all the time I have for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. Of course, this is your host, Thomas Harry, signing off. And I'll see you guys on next week's episode.